All right, so number one says the video of two llamas running away from the police is being viewed on YouTube at a rate of this. This is a rate to the nearest million how many people have seen the video after five days. Okay, you're given a rate. You're given some sort of velocity almost. It's not really velocity, but that idea. And you want to know how many or how much. What do we do to go from a rate to how much? Integrate. We're going to integrate. From when to when are we going to integrate this problem? From zero days to five days. From the time that video is uploaded till the end. And I want to integrate that equation. Anytime you are given some sort of rate and you want to know how much of something happened, you're going to use uh, integration. So, um, math 9, I'm going to integrate it from 0 to 5. I'm going to type in my equation, which is 100 e to the negative 0.2 t dt. I type in the equation. I hit enter. That will tell me the answer to my question in terms of how much. So 316.060. Oh, to the nearest million? Good answer. So 316 million is going to be my answer to that question. Sorry. Thank you. It is closest million, so 316 million. Does it make sense how we did that one? It looks like a hard question when you start to read it. But when you think about what it is, it's easy. Throw it into integration and go. Good on number one. Number two is like a five or six part, six part question. But they're all fairly similar. Just to understand what's going on. It says a particle moves along the line with this velocity from zero to ten. Anytime they give me an equation, I'm going to try and graph it. So they gave me an equation. I get to use my calculator. I'd like to know what it looks like. So x cosine x minus ln x plus 2. I'm going to type it in. I'm going to hit graph and look at my picture. From when to when am I supposed to look at this graph? 0 to 10. So I don't really care what happens over here. That doesn't matter. Does that show me everything on my y-axis that I need to see? No. No. This right, if you notice, follow the curve. It goes here, and then it goes down off your graph. So I need to go down a little bit more to see everything. So I'm going to change my window. I don't really care what happens at negative 10. I want to start at 0 and go to 10. And my y minimum of negative 10 wasn't deep enough, so I'm going to go to like negative 15 to see if I can see the whole picture then. I'm going to graph it. So I'm seeing 0 to 10 like I'm supposed to. And good. Now it looks like I can see the whole bottom of the graph. Okay, so the first thing you got to do is make sure your window's good. Questions are there. The next question asks, when does it achieve its maximum speed? You are given velocity. How are velocity and speed related? Vol speed is equal to the absolute value of velocity. Basically, you can be going 40 miles per hour forward or 40 miles per hour backward. That's your speed. Okay? If you're talking about velocity, it would be positive 40 and negative 40. Okay? So looking at this graph, what are we looking for? The absolute value of that, which means what? The biggest value. I either want the highest point or the lowest point. So just be a smart human being here. What's bigger? That value up there or this value down here? When we're talking about absolute value, this one is. Let's call this one like 7. Okay, this is like negative 11 or 12, and it's down, It's but it's absolute value. So if it's negative 11 or 12, it's just 12. I need to figure out when this happens. I need to know when this crosses the or what t value that is. How do I find out where that occurs? Second calc. Calculate what? The minimum here because I want to know the lowest point. So I'm moving my cursor to the left side of that minimum. So that's fine. I'm to the left of it. Then I'm going to move my cursor to the right side of it. That's where it is. Right here. So I need to go a little bit to the right of it. 
That's a little bit to the right of it. Good. There's my answer. T equals this number right here. 9.538. That is when it happens. Okay. Second question is what is the total distance traveled? This is a velocity graph right now. To find the total distance, to find distance, velocity. What do I need to do with velocity to find a distance of it? Antiderivative. I need to integrate it. Okay? From when to when do you think? From the start to the end, so from 0 to 10. And the absolute value. Jessica, why are we using absolute value? Why do we need it? What hap what's the velocity right here? It's total distance. This is negative distance when you go down. So I don't care that it's negative distance. This would be negative area, and that would be positive area, that would be negative area. I don't care. I just want to know, uh, I just want to know the total area. So we take the absolute value of V of T. So second quit. I'm going to go back here. Math 9, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 10. And that equation, and I need to take the absolute value of it. So remember how to do the absolute value. We hit alpha F2. Alpha F2 gets me to ABS like I wanted there. That puts the absolute value signs in. And then I want to put what inside the absolute values? Y1. We've already graphed it, so don't type it in again. If you want to, you could. You could type that equation in right there. But I've already got it in, so I'm going to hit alpha trace, and it has Y1 right there. Alpha F4. I hit alpha F4, or the trace button right there. Mm -hmm. You good? Okay. D, X, enter. It's going to take a while. Anytime you got to do absolute value in your calculator, it's hard to calculate. That's why we don't do it. If you remember when we first did those type of problems, we graphed them because it was easier to graph it than actually find the answer. It's still working. It just takes a minute. There you go. There's my answer. 39.039. Ah, That's the total distance that that object travels. Uh, second trace. Or I'm sorry, alpha trace. Alpha trace gives you the variables. You could just type it back in again, but alpha trace obviously is a bit easier. If the position of the particle is that, when t equals 4, what is the position of the particle at 7? So it's telling you where you are at 4 seconds. You want to know at 7 seconds. Okay? So we know that at 4 seconds. You're at 14. You want to know what's happening at t equals 7. So what could we call this time at 4? It could be our what here. That should be our starting value. This is going to be my ending value here. I'm trying to find out the ending. If you know where you started and you want to know what happened at the end, what do you need to know about the middle? You don't need to know the middle if you, do, if you don't know the end? You need to know how far you've gone, right? In order to make that assumption, you've got to know how far you've gone. So I need to add the displacement. The displacement, remember, means the change. How do I find the displacement on this problem? We're going to integrate from 4 to 7. That equation, to figure out displacement, you take the equation and you integrate it from 4 to 7 in this case. So I'm going to take math 9 from 4 to 7, alpha F1, or Y1 here, alpha F4, sorry. It's the Y1 equation, dx, and to that answer I'm going to add that initial position of 14. I get 17. 
0.009. That's my ending position. When t equals 7, that's where I'm located at 17.009. Questions are there. The next question says, when is the particle moving to the right? So we're looking back at our graph again. This is a velocity graph. What is true about velocity if we're going to say it's moving to the right? Savannah says velocity is positive. Okay, so what are we looking for in this graph to determine when velocity is positive? Mm -hmm. This is velocity. Here is when velocity is positive, right there. So from here to there, I am moving to the right. Well, I need to write that down. How can I figure out where that value is right there? What am I going to calculate? We always hit second calculate. I'm going to calculate the zero. I want to know when it crosses the x-axis. So second. Zero. Left bound. Move to the left of it. Enter. Move to the right of it. There it's on it. Go a little bit to the right. Enter. Guess. Enter. So 5.107. That's when I first cross the x-axis. Then I'm above the x-axis. I'm above the x-axis. I'm above to there. So second. Calculate. Zero again. I'm going to move to the left of it, enter, move to the right of it, enter, guess, enter. So I stop moving to the right at 7.550. And now it asks us to justify. Just be smart with this justification. Don't make it difficult. So Reagan, what were we looking for in this to decide when we were moving to the right? What, did we, what, what were we looking on at that graph to determine that's when it was happening? What was positive? The graph, okay? So good, I agree with you. Let's get even more specific when we make that description. What is the name of this graph that we have? V of t here. This is a V of t graph. So Reagan said it right. She said the graph is positive, okay? When we're writing a justification, tell them its name. Hey, the name of that graph is V of t. So if I'm justifying this, V of T is positive. You can say positive, or you could just write greater than zero. That's the easy way to write positive. Questions there? We're almost done. Stick with me. What is the acceleration of the particle at T equals 6? We know velocity right now. Nicole, what do we need to know about velocity in order to find its acceleration? The derivative of velocity is acceleration. So we want to know what's the slope at 6. We haven't done that in a while in our calculator, but let's remember how that works. Instead of math 8, or instead of math 9, we're going to use math 8. Math 9 is finding the integral. We want to find the derivative, so we're going to do math 8. We're taking the derivative with respect to x on our equation. So again, y1 when x is equal to what? 6. So I'm finding V prime, I'm finding the derivative at 6, or you could call it A at 6. We're finding the acceleration at 6. Type it in, hit enter. Doesn't take a whole lot of work once you know what you're doing. 2.512. Does that make sense what we did on, on E? Last one says, is the velocity increasing or decreasing at t equals 3? Brandon, what do you think? Is my velocity increasing or decreasing at t equals 3? So t equals 3 right here. It's decreasing. How can you tell? So Brandon thinks it's decreasing. How can you tell? What were you looking for to determine if it was decreasing? The slope of that. 
So velocity, what's the slope of velocity called? Acceleration at 3. If you're looking at the slope, what were you looking for specifically on the slope? Positive or negative. And what do we want it to be if it's decreasing? Negative. Okay, so here's what Brandon did. It's, it's easy to look at a graph and say it's decreasing. Hey, we're here at 3. What's happening in the line? Oh, it's going down. Well, that means it's decreasing. Okay? If you want a justification, this would be the justification. The derivative, the slope, that's what acceleration is. At 3 seconds was negative. It was going down. That's the fancy way of writing that. Okay? That's a good study tool as you get ready for your test.